Hi. Now, in this video, what I want to show you is how we go about finding the equation of a circle that passes through three given points. And to demonstrate this, I've got this question here, where we've got to find the equation of a circle passing through these points, A, B, and C, with coordinates minus 2, 2, 5, 1, and minus 2, minus 6, respectively. OK, so the best thing you can do in questions like this is to draw a sketch. So if we take some axes, x and y axes, and mark the points on, we're going to get something like this with our points A, B and C marked on. And so we're looking for the circle then that passes through these three points. And if you draw that on, it's going to look something like that. Now. When it comes to working out the equation of the circle, we need to find the centre and the radius. And you should be familiar with one geometrical fact that if we look at the chords of any circle, okay, like for instance AC, AB or BC, then the centre will always lie on the perpendicular bisector of those chords. Now, Whenever you've got a question like this, if you sketch it out, you can generally see which are the horizontal chords or vertical chords, if you've got any, because it really does simplify the question. And in this one, I've picked this question to show a vertical chord here. So I'm going to start with that vertical chord, AC it's a lot easier to work with, as you'll see. So if we mark it in, then if I'm going to find the perpendicular bisector, which is going to be a line running roughly through there, I need to find the midpoint of AC. And let's just mark that perpendicular bisector in first of all. So it passes through the midpoint here. And clearly, to get that midpoint then, I've just got to do the mean of the y coordinates here. So y is going to equal 2 plus minus 6. Okay, and then we just need to divide that by 2, the mean of the y coordinates. So if you work that out, you're going to get negative 4 divided by 2, which is going to be minus 2. So the equation of our line is y equals minus 2. We know that then that the center of the circle somewhere around here. Let's just mark it in. OK, it's going to be roughly about there. It's going to have a y coordinate then of minus 2. Now we've got to get the x coordinate of the center. And we can do that by drawing, say, the chord AB in or the chord BC in and working out the equation of the perpendicular bisector. Now clearly, AB or BC are not horizontal or vertical chords. So it's going to be a little bit more work to work out the equation then of the perpendicular bisector. It's up to you which chord you take. I'm going to take AB. OK, so let's just draw that chord in AB and the perpendicular bisector. There we go. OK, so it's going to pass through the center here. Now, in order to work out the equation of that perpendicular bisector, I need the midpoint. And then I can work out the gradient of AB and then use the perpendicular gradient rule to get the gradient of the perpendicular bisector. And then I can substitute those values, the midpoint and the gradient, into the equation of a line. OK? and I should be able to work out its equation. And then we'll go on to do sub, um, simultaneous equations to work out the center here. OK, so that's the method. Let's just move on then. So for the midpoint of AB, I'm going to take the mean of the x coordinates for A and B and the mean of the y coordinates. So in the usual way then for the x coordinate, it's just going to be minus 2 plus 5 divided by 2. I'll show the working here. Minus 2 plus 5, all divided by 2. And for the y coordinate there, it's going to be 2 plus the 1 divided by 2. So 2 plus 1 divided by 2. 
and if you work that out then you've got one and a half one and a half I'm going to leave it as three over two though and three over two much easier to work with if it's expressed in that form now we next need to get the gradient then of AB which will allow me to get the perpendicular gradient of the perpendicular bisector so in the usual way then if we look at the gradient of AB I've just got to do the difference in the y coordinates divided by the difference in the x coordinates so if I start with the 2 here we'll do 2 minus 1 again I'll show the working 2 minus 1 the difference in the y coordinates divided by the difference in the x coordinates so that's minus 2 minus 5 so minus 2 minus the 5 and if you work that out you're going to get a negative gradient it's going to be minus one seventh and what does that mean well it tells us that the perpendicular gradient is going to be the negative reciprocal of this so in other words switch the sign which will be just a positive and turn this upside down so you end up with seven over one or a perpendicular gradient then of seven Okay, so that's our gradient of our perpendicular bisector, 7. We know the coordinates of the midpoint here. It's 3 over 2, 3 over 2. So we're in a position then to find the equation of that perpendicular bisector, AB. And if I use the form y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1 for the form of the equation of a straight line, substitute my values in, I'm going to get y minus y1 so that's the coordinate of the center here 3 over 2 equals m the gradient of the perpendicular bisector which is 7 multiplied by x minus x1 the coordinate here of this midpoint of the chord ab so that's going to be minus 3 over 2 okay so I'm going to label this equation 1. We're going to need to come back to that. I could simplify this further, but what I need to do is solve simultaneously the equations of the two perpendicular bisectors. That will tell me the coordinates where this meets. Because I took this very simple vertical chord here, it enabled me to get the equation very easily of the perpendicular bisector y equal minus 2. So all I need to do is just substitute y equals minus 2 then, okay, the minus 2 here, into equation 1. And this will give us the x-coordinate once we work this out. So if you substitute that in, you're going to get minus 2 minus the 3 over 2 equals 7 times all of x minus 3 over 2. In fact, we'll just expand that bracket out, okay, so we'll end up with 7x minus 21 over 2. Now I can see that if I add 21 over 2 to both sides, I'll just get minus 3 over 2 plus 21 over 2. That's going to be 18 over 2, which is 9. So minus 2 plus 9 is going to be 7, equals the 7x. Divide both sides by 7, and it follows then that x equals 1. So therefore, I've got the center coordinate here. Let's just mark it in that the center of our circle has coordinates 1, minus 2. Now that I've got the center, I just need to get the radius of the circle. So if I start from the center, I can go out to any one of these three coordinates. I'm going to go out to this one here. doesn't matter which one you do. So this will be our radius. Let's just see if we can mark that in as R for our radius, okay? And what I'm going to be doing then is just working out the distance between those two points, basically using Pythagoras' theorem. I'll just mark that center back in again. We've got one minus two there. And so to work out the radius here, all I need to do is use Pythagoras' theorem then and get that distance between those two points. So Pythagoras' theorem, we've got the hypotenuse squared, that's going to be r squared, equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So 
If we work out this side, that's the difference in the x coordinates. That's going to be 5 minus 1 all squared. So we've got 5 minus 1 all squared plus this side squared. That's the difference in the y coordinates. So it's going to be 1 minus minus 2. So 1 minus minus 2. And that side is squared. So we end up with 4 squared, which is 16 plus 3 squared, which is 9, and that gives us 25. Okay, you might recognize this as the 3, 4, 5 triangle, because when we take the square root then of 25, we end up with r equaling 5. Okay, for the radius. So, now we've got the center of the circle and the radius. We should be in a position to state the equation of the circle. We know the form. It's x minus x1 all squared plus y minus y1 all squared equals the radius squared, where x1 and y1 are the coordinates of the center of the circle. So what we've got then is x minus the x coordinate of the center of the circle. That's 1. We square that plus y minus the y coordinate of the center of the circle. So that's y minus minus 2. So it's going to be y plus 2. That's squared. And it equals the radius squared, which is 5 squared or 25. OK, so I hope it's given you an idea how to do questions like this. Now, I picked one that was fairly straightforward. I demonstrated the vertical chord here so that it would make it a lot easier to work out the equation of the perpendicular bisector. So by drawing a sketch, you should be able to notice whether you've got vertical chords or horizontal chords. If you have, use them. If you haven't, if you've got ones that slope, like this one, then, OK, we only had to work one equation out here for the perpendicular bisector by using this method. You would have to repeat this method, OK, on another chord. Essentially, then, you would then do simultaneous equations to find the centre of the circle between the two perpendicular bisectors that you've got. All right, so uh, I hope this given you then, as I said earlier, an idea on how to do these. Okay, and hopefully see you in another video if you need any further help.